Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Sharon Cullen Art. I'm going to walk over to my studio. I went out there yesterday for the first time in like a month. Pat had gone once and watered my plants. And yesterday, I'm sorry, I'm still out of breath from this pneumonia. Yesterday, I got out there and I did an entire video and it was a total wash because half of it wasn't even on the freaking frame. I was having a bad day. I was having a really bad day. I was having panic attacks and all sorts of crap. So it wasn't a good look. So today I'm starting over and I'm going to redo the video. Although part of it is going to be a little different. But, oh, it sounds like Pat's back. Yep, he is. So anyway, on my way over to the studio, I just wanted to show you guys my view or the way things are looking now. Can you believe it? There's grass. There's actual flipping grass. And then over here... We've got our Russian sage going and some other tall grasses that'll be growing in. I'm going to kind of walk on my wood chips so that I don't screw up the yard too much. But um, we've got the stairway going up. We had a monsoon and it the dirt did not wash onto our patio. So that was a good sign. But anyway, let me take you over to the studio and we will just go in going to walk over on this too. Now there's a lot of weeds in my grass because we are waiting to have it weeded and fed, um, weed and feed done. So um, the other thing I wanted to show you, I posted on Instagram, is my sign. Pat put my sign up. So uh, yeah, that was pretty cool too. I'm happy about that. And then my walkway is not quite long enough because they ran out of stones. But um, we have a few left, so hopefully I can just put them in here. And uh, say, we're gonna go put jet skis in. you are. So Pat's gonna get a suit on. Oh boy! I thought you were making Karen and the kids do that. I can't take the nagging anymore. <laughs> all righty then. So over here. Pat put in all my daylilies that were over by my garage. They're already filling out really well. Um, and they're going to fill in these, these things going all the way across. It's nice because I can see them from inside too. And then across the front are just some irises um, that will slowly fill in also. They bloomed, but I missed most of it because I was um, unable to come over here because the seed had just been laid down. So, come in here. Yesterday there was a huge freaking spider web on here. There's still a little egg sac thing there, and that's grossing me out. But let me just get my key here, and we will get into the studio. Okay, it's a little cooler in here. Not much. I think it's just a little drier in here because <laughs> it hasn't been opened up. I might just leave it closed. But um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get everything set up for the video. So here I am back in my studio. It feels so good to be in here. And uh, I'm slowly healing up from the pneumonia. Thank you for all the prayers and the well wishes and everything. And um, I do appreciate all of it. Oh, I got a new t-shirt. You guys got to check this out. Didn't get to use it, though. Making memories one campsite at a time. That did not happen because I was in the hospital. And then it wasn't safe for me to go on vacation. So we totally missed it. We would have been back yesterday, actually. So, um, yeah, that kind of sucked. But it's okay. It's okay because I live in paradise. I mean, what could I ask for? I can't ask for more than that. I mean, it's just, it's just beautiful here. So uh, it's what keeps me going. People say, how do you do that? You're so strong. You're such a strong person. You know, when you don't have a choice, when your pain is skyrocketing through the roof, every day of your flipping real life, then you've got to do something. I just can't curl up and die. So uh, my pain medication does help me. It would be even worse without it. So I'm very thankful for that. One thing I want to say before I get too far into the video is to Catherine, 
if you're watching, Catherine. Be kind to people. Please be kind to people. You know, you didn't need to leave me that message on that video. Um, not wanting to hear about my ailments. It was a chat. It said it right in there. It was a chat. And I spoke about being in the hospital. I had just been released and I was trying to put up a video for you people. Even though I felt like crap. I talked about the work on my house. I talked about the landscaping at my house. I talked about painting. So, and I painted a freaking picture. If you didn't want to listen to me, turn the volume off. Or better yet, just go away. I don't need this crap. I'm too old for this childish keyboard vomit. So keep it in your fingers and don't share it with me because I really don't care if you come or go or whatever. I love all of you guys. I really do. But I will not tolerate. I absolutely will not tolerate meanness in keyboard vomit. So if that's what you're going to do, save it. Just swipe me off and go on to the next video if you don't want to hear what I have to say. Or turn the volume off and just watch without listening to me. <sighs> that's it. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm going to show you a couple things that I got. Uh, I got two books also. One of them I'm going to go over with you today. The other one I have not read yet. I plan to read. It is by the same author, and I love her work. Um, you all know how much I like Le Pen. I showed you one of his books previously. I've reviewed his books, but I think in the previous video, I showed a little bit about him because I had taken one of his domestic classes. Well, there's another woman by the name of um, Royson Curé, I believe is how you say it, but she's probably French or something, so I'm probably saying it all wrong. Um, but anyway, it's the latest Urban Sketching Handbook. It's about drawing expressive people. I don't know about you guys, but I have a little problem drawing people. I'm always intimidated by it. I'm afraid it's going to ruin my sketch. But when I look at other people's sketches, some of their people are so wonky and funny, it just adds so much to the sketch. I don't know if you agree with me or not. But I love the wonky people. And that's one of the things I really like about Le Pen. Um, because, here, let me show you. Shoot, don't have the book with me here. It's in my house. I'm not walking back and forth again because it is too much trouble, but I will try to post a photo up in, in the corner here uh, of some of his work with an example. Um, when he draws people, it is so cute. He makes their heads very large. He says that you can capture everything in their expression and their eyes are the most important. So that's what he focuses on. Sometimes they'll have very big eyes and a long face or a wide face or whatever. But when he does a body, their arms are always super short, and their bodies are super stocky short, almost dwarf-like, in comparison to the size of their head. And it is, it's so cute. It's, it's so cute. I just love it. So, um, Royce and Cray Actually, is it's the author of this Roisin. Urban Sketching Handbook. She's the one who speaks about people. She's a great sketch artist. Um, I can show you. Some of her supplies in the beginning of the book that are just, they're so well drawn out. Um, they look like photographs almost. But she does this and then she will draw people, some of them very um, lifelike, you know what I mean? Um, but she talks about the challenges of drawing people, drawing people with movement. She talks about their... Um, the most common poses that you'll see. She's even drawn orchestras. She likes to do that because they're sitting still. Oh, Freaking orchestra. I'm not that. I, I, I'd like to learn to do that. But um, she talks about the differences between adults, seniors, and children and how to draw each. She goes on, um, let me see trying to find some of the chapters here. She talks about proportions, and that's where she goes into the children versus um, adults versus seniors, um, what you're going to see, kind of like the, the change in the body 
uh, shoulders coming up, the neck shortening, that kind of thing. You'll see that a lot with seniors. But there is this one spot where she was doing, she was doing a um, bunch about, I mean, look at this one. This one's beautiful too. Look at that. That's not a quick sketch, I'll just tell you. Um, that one is not by her. That's Thomas Harry Gunawan. She's, there are other people in here. Uh, she talks about poses and actions. Getting your poses right comes back to the same thing. Good observation. Learn to look honestly, see, and then draw correctly. And you can push your poses in whatever direction your heart tells you to. Drawing correctly is a skill. It's up to you to put your own creative stamp on your work while still retaining the essence of the pose. But um, then, like this one, she captures this so beautifully. The beach. They're at the sea. And it's a windy day and it looks cold. Look at them. They're both all huddled up trying to keep warm. So you can tell just by looking at that sketch exactly what's going on. It's cold outside. It's very windy. It's piercing through them. And they are trying to stay warm. Here's one probably. This is by Rita Sabler. She was drawing her daughter in her bedroom. Look at that. Isn't that really cool? Um, but then there's some, I'm trying to find hers. Here's Felix Scheinberger. I love his stuff. I did one of his classes. He does these wonky faces. They're misproportioned and they're so cool, but they show so much expression. You can see the expression in her. Just very cool. So anyway, this book goes into a lot of detail. And then in the back, of course, like all the books, there are challenges that you can do. Uh, check them off as you do them. Uh, saying challenge yourself. Draw a figure from a photo using pencil, then draw the figure from life using pencil. What's the difference? And then uh, draw a figure from life in sketchy lines using a thin nib. Um, then they say using a brush pen, using only a ballpoint. You know, all sorts of different things. So this book is worth getting. So I just wanted to mention that to you. Uh, you can get it on Amazon, but I really enjoy this book. I haven't read through the whole thing. The second thing is, is this bag. This bag is so cool. I, it is so heavy right now because I've got so much stuff packed in it, but it's a backpack. So I can put it over my back. And the nice thing is, and it's got... A back access zipper if you want to get inside. It also has side pockets on both sides. It has a front zipper pocket. And then when you open the top, it opens wide, completely wide. So you can see all the way to the bottom. And I have got so much stuff packed in here. My iPad, my sketchbook, my sketching supplies, brushes, all sorts of stuff that I had in the house because... I haven't been in my studio, so I needed to take a lot of stuff over there. The next thing I wanted to show you was some pens that I got. I, Like I said, I, I talking about Le Pen, I wanted to tell you about um, the class that I took. Now, I like to take classes on Domestica because I can find classes that are a little more... Oh, gosh darn it, hang on a second. There we go. Oh, that hurts. Oh, that hurts. Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, I lost two. Anyway, I was going to say that I can take, I like to take classes over on Domestica. Bear with me. I'm going to talk to you while I search for these. Um, for these other two. Because there's, they're more challenging classes. Um, I, can, I can really challenge myself. And uh, over on places like Skillshare, I have more difficulty finding classes that are geared to my level of learning. A lot of them are geared more to the beginner. And some of the beginner classes, I don't mind because I like the, the artist's style. I took classes over on domestica and I like domestica 
better than I like Skillshare. To be honest, I haven't taken any classes on Skillshare. I look through them and I browse and I find things. Um, I'm talking art related classes. There are other classes there that I would like to take sewing classes and such like that. But anyway, um, most of the classes are geared to beginner, advanced beginner, maybe early intermediate. And I want more challenging classes from well-known artists who are highly um, admired for their work. And so I like to take classes from them. Felix Scheinberger was one I took a class from, although his class, I don't really recommend it. It's not bad, but it moves way too slow for me. And he doesn't get into the nitty gritty that I wanted. Then I took the class from Le Pen that I told you about, and I really enjoyed his urban sketching one. He has two on Domestica, urban sketching and botanical. And I recommend both of them, but I wanted to take the urban sketching one because of his people and the buildings and such like that. So um, one of the things that he spoke about in his class were the way he uses his pens. Now, he always uses black in the foreground. He uses microns. He uses black in the foreground. He'll use a light gray in the background. And in between, sometimes he'll use sepia. So I went online. I've been wanting to get some sepia microns anyway. But I went online and I found this set of eight microns in 0 0.5 and 0 0.1. And they have two black ones. I'm missing a black one right now. And 0.5 and 0.1. Then they had two gray ones in 0.5 and 0.1. Then light gray ones in 0.5 and 0.1. And then sepia in 0.5 and 0.1. So I got this set and I've been using it and I'm really enjoying it. So when I get over here to the table, I'll show you the, um, the different... Uh, colors and show you a uh, difference in them. The next thing I want to show you was something that uh, I've been wanting to get and I've been waiting for it, impatiently waiting for it to come out. And you guys know how much I love um, Art Toolkit Maria's, Maria's uh, palettes. And I use those palettes regularly. Uh, I have the business card size one which I cannot find here. Here it is. And I have the Demi palette, which is the mini one. This is half the size of a business card palette. And I've showed that to you before. And inside my business card palette, I had these colors. They're not in there anymore uh, because I'm redoing this video <laughs> and it's too late to show you what I did, but I'll try to put a little bit of it in there. Um, but in the meantime, I've just filled this with empty pans. And what I plan to do is use this as a gouache palette. I will put the gouache in as I need it. The bigger pans, the bigger pans I will probably use for black and white and maybe my ultramarine blue. And then the other pans would be for other colors. But I will just put it in as needed. And then when I'm finished, if there's paint left in there, I'll just let it dry in the palette. And then when I come back, I'll reconstitute it with water, let it sit for several minutes, and then get started again. So that's my plan for this palette. This has been one of my favorite palettes. I love it because it's lightweight. I love it because it takes very little space. I'm struggling to, to uh, hold on to things. I'm so shaky because I've been having a lot of panic attacks. You can see how shaky I am. So um, anyway, this, this palette is going to be for gouache now instead of for watercolor. And then my other one, my little mini palette, I had with half pans, and I really only use this one with water brushes because I'm always afraid I'm gonna ruin it. Um, I had all these colors in here, but a couple of them have been removed. I removed uh, my turquoise and then my perling green. So that brings me to this new palette that Maria came out with for Art Toolkit, and it is called the Folio Palette. Oh, my bag's tipping over. It's called the Folio Palette. This palette is bigger than two business card palettes, a little bit bigger. 
Now I've already put my colors in here because I did the video yesterday and it turned out like crap because everything was down here. So you couldn't see a thing that I was doing. So I'm going to turn this camera around and I will show you exactly what I did and what colors that I've put in this palette. Let me turn you around. Okay, so let me show you first the pens that that I used. I found the .5. It was sitting right on my table. I just never packed it yesterday. And uh, I got a little pan there. This is the .5 black and then the .1 black. You can see the difference in the... Oh, hang on a second. Okay. I think about an hour past or so. I don't know. <coughs> I have friends here. So those were the black markers. Then the light gray. Here's the .5 and the light gray. Let me see if I can zoom this in a little bit here. Where am I? There I am. Oh, now the dog wants in. Holy cow. So that's the gray. You can see it's just slightly lighter than the black. It's more of a, um, I'd say it's a cool gray. And there's the point one. Then we've got the light gray, which is really light. You're going to have trouble seeing it probably. I'll just do a wide swath. And then the point one. Again, this one will be very hard to see, so you can almost not see it, but it'd be great for maybe doing a distant rooftop or window, something like that. And then we've got the sepia, which I love. So that's the, it looks dry. Darn, these are new. That's not good. And there's the point one. So there's my, my new things. Now, my palette. I ended up taking the colors out of the other palette, these colors, and I put them in here. Then yesterday, I closed it, and my, my other one that I had filled and put in here ended up getting all over the place. So I've got Alizarin Crimson. This is um, Winsor & Newton Permanent Rose. Then I've got the rest are Daniel Smith. Then I've got Quinacridone Gold, Yellow Ochre, Hansa Yellow Light, uh, then Green Gold, and then I went in with Phthalo, Phthalo Green, what is that called? Phthalo, Phthalo Yellow Green is what that's called. Then I have my Sap, then I have Peacock Blue, which is actually not Daniel Smith. It's like, it's like Phthalo Blue, same, um, same formula, but it uh, is by uh, Shinhan Professional Watercolor. Then I've got, this might be not Daniel Smith either, actually. This one is my um, Ultramarine, but I believe I used Rembrandt, and it is French. Yes. I use Rembrandt, French Ultramarine. Rembrandt has really good watercolors, and they come in huge, huge things. This one was, how many mLs? 20 mLs. Um, then this over here is my gray or whatever. And then I have um, Burnt Sienna. Then I have Hematite Burnt Scarlet, which is a brown color. Then I have Hematite Genuine. Then I have... Um, Oh, this was indigo blue. I'm sorry. This is indigo. This is uh, Dr. Z's Cool Gray. And then this is Potter's Pink, which I have all over the place. And this is Perlene Green, which I probably will not want to have a small pan of that. I'll want a bigger pan of that. And I'll probably shrink down my reds eventually because I don't use a ton of red. Okay, so while this is going, um, I'll just explain real quick. I just measure up my space that I have, do a little quick division, and come up with my plan for how big I want my chart to be. And I always make it a little smaller than the inside of my palette, allowing for a very small rim of my um, lamination after I've laminated it so that it'll all fit in the palette. So that's what I'm doing there is doing my math and figuring out how 
how much space I need in order to get all the colors in there. And then I will go on along here and tell you um, about my trip to my surgeon because so many of you guys were asking. If you don't want to hear this, just mute the audio. You don't need to leave me nasty comments. Um, but anyway, I went to well, another, I think almost a week has passed since I did this video and I just haven't had any time to do finish the editing and then I forgot about it. But here I am. Uh, I went to see my surgeon last Thursday. It's the 5th of July now, so um, I saw him, and basically what he showed me was that uh, the surgery that I would require is only on my L5. I don't have to have all the other ones fixed, although down the road he did say I will possibly need more surgeries because of my genetic arthritis that... Um, you know, with the spondyloarthritis that I have, which is autoimmune, it's going to continue to deteriorate my spine. <coughs> so um, anyway, he said there are three things you can do. You can do nothing and live the way you're living, which is not really a possibility for me because my quality of life is in the toilet. Or I could have the surgery right now, or I can... Um, go with conservative treatment first, and I chose that route. I do have an injection scheduled, uh, an epidural steroid injection for my spine tomorrow, and so I'm going to have that done and also call physical therapy to schedule physical therapy. I have a feeling it's going to fail, but I'm going to go ahead and try it. Plus, I think my insurance will probably require that anyway, and then I go back and see the surgeon again in September. So that's when I would likely have surgery is probably the middle to end of September, which gives me my summer back, except that I'm in pain. So that's taken my summer away, basically. But as long as I'm sitting, I'm not in too much pain and I can enjoy myself. So a few things that I spoke to the doctor about while well, he showed me my MRI and he said they always do these MRIs laying down and it really doesn't give us a true picture of what's going on, which is exactly what I said. <coughs> and then he said that um, he wanted to show me some other pictures and he pulled out his phone and he said, this is me. And then he showed me my films. This is you. And I said, well, it doesn't look any different. They both look the same. And he said, exactly. And he said, and this is me after surgery and he swiped his phone and he showed me all the rods and screws and the metal spacers and all this crap that they put in them and I thought oh my god then I proceeded to have a panic attack and I was flipping out and I told him about what had happened to me after my surgery the last time because I had my surgery on a Friday and he was not on call so um, he was not there for anything that happened to me but I ended up um, seeing what he had done. He said he had surgery 11 years ago and he's still growing, going strong and that he does not baby his back and he has no pain. But he also did say that because of my pain medication usage that I would have, quote unquote, extremely intense pain post-op and there will be nothing they can do to control it except that they're using different medications pre-op, they load you up with steroids pre-op, and methadone in order to try to control the pain in the pain receptors post-op. And that brings me full circle to where I was with my neck surgery and how I ended up arresting and the CPR team over me. It was because I was overdosed as they were trying to control my pain. And so that's where my panic attack started and my PTSD started. So it's going to be really hard to control when I go in the hospital. And I can only talk about it now because I've delayed it two months. But, uh, yeah, so that, that really scares me. But I will have coaches with me. I'm going to have my sister and my sister-in-law help me out and then Pat, hopefully. And... Um, the other thing was, is even if I wanted to have surgery, like right now, I'm still recovering from my 
pneumonia, and I won't be able to have surgery for a little while until they're sure that's all cleared up. So now back to my palette. I ended up going around everything with Sharpie because I didn't like the way the edges looked and it got a little bit thicker than I was expecting. But I'm going back over it with my Micron pen and writing in all of the colors so that I know what color is what. And then I'm going to go ahead and laminate it and trim the edges and it will be all set to go. Well, I kind of screwed it up so that's why I went over it with the Sharpie to thicken the lines because yeah, it was a mess. So I'm just cutting this down real close, but um, not so close that it's going to open up. You know, I want it to last a little bit. Uh, that's a little bit too wide. Can't see. It might be too close. <laughs> Oops. closer to let's see if it fits oh it fits just fine so that's perfect I can just tuck it in here like this and close it up and it snaps shut just perfectly and I'm all set with my palette then so that's it this is the folio and you can do so many different different uh, things um, putting different pans in this had a bunch of half pans in it and only six full pans. I prefer the full pans, so that's why I went with those. And then I just kept a couple half pans. The colors that I don't use a lot, once I wear them down, I'll probably change them over to half pans and then I can add another color in. But really, I've got more than enough colors here. And these are just two more mixing areas. I could put paint in them if I wanted to, but they have the white bottoms for mixing, so that makes it really nice to uh, mix mix the paint with and um, yeah and then this will be for my gouache and that's more than enough spots for my gouache too my other little pans are inside and I think I've got some with white bottoms that I can use for mixing also but um, yeah that'll be great for gouache so I have my two palettes here all ready to go okay so that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed my quick little uh, show and tell. <laughs> but anyway, <coughs> remember, be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. Be kind to each other. It's so simple. Be kind to me, please. <laughs> anyway, have a great day and God bless you. Bye-bye.